Hello and welcome back to Aetheral Space 5.2. Yeah, last time on Aetheral Space, I forgot his name, but there was like a guy. These people who think they're humans, maybe they are, They, but they have like weird not human features like Reachers. Um, anyway, I'm getting caught up. This guy like stole some knowledge about how to use Aether, but they called it God's Blood. And then some guys were like, hmm, you shouldn't have done that. And then they killed him, and then he was like, Go, my sister, run away from this place! And then he died to save her, and now it fast-forwarded to the modern time. And mm. she saw our heroes land, and we're like, Oh my god, they're not humans. So clearly someone's got a wrong opinion on what humans are. And that's where we're at. There are a lot of lore details that I can't qu succinctly explain it in a wrap-up, so just go listen to the last episode. Yeah, if you're, if, you if, you're, if you're jumping on the episode, uh, chapter, like Arc 5, Chapter 2, you go into lose some information. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it was early in the morning when Ruth first saw her. The admiral's men had gathered the citizens of the township to welcome the return of their lord and master. Celebration and jubilation prompted by the watchful eye of a rifle. Half-hearted balloons and parade floats littered Corey's central square, soon cleared away by the guards as Admiral Baradad's shuttle came down to land, sending fearsome gusts of wind smashing against the ground. One nearby house rattled ominously. It wouldn't be out of the question for it to collapse. It had happened before, after all. Oleg had snuck the two of them into Kira to observe Baradad's arrival. If anyone found out that two members of the Resistance were here, they'd be killed without a doubt. But Oleg seemed confident that wouldn't happen. He was a brutal, rough-spun man, with a face that looked like it had been smashed into place. A pair of two small spectacles balanced atop his jagged nose. Ah, I'm just imagining Mazgus with glasses. A bulky coat covered his form. Sometimes Ruth wondered how he could handle wearing stuff like that in the jungle heat of Myrios, but he'd never given her a straight answer. Ruth herself wasn't really one to talk, though. The 14-year-old had her hand stuffed into the pockets of the dusty red hoodie she was wearing, and the heat was sweltering, even with the aether she was using to combat it. They lingered at the edge of the crowd, watching the proceedings. Nobody was looking at them, but still, Ruth couldn't help but feel suspicion crawling over her back. Why would no one be looking at someone wearing a hoodie on a hot planet? That seems very sus to me. I would think they are immediately shoplifting. <laughs> we shouldn't be here, she growled quietly, staring straight forward. Bad feeling. Oleg's voice didn't rise above a whisper. No choice. They need someone to report on the Admiral. We can't fight him if we don't know where he is. Ruth sn scratched her arm anxiously. Still don't like it. This is too exposed. We shouldn't be here. Oleg shushed her, looking up at the sky. Her own eyes flicked up to follow his gaze. The door to Admiral Baradad's shuttle, now landed, was slowly opening. From what Ruth Blaine understood, Admiral Zed Baradad was essentially the devil. He'd worked his way up to the upper echelons of the Supremacy's military, killed countless people fighting their wars, and was given the planet of Mirios as a reward. By extension, of course, that included the people of Mirios. He could do whatever he wanted with them. It was how he got his kicks. Enjoy it while you can, Ruth thought, as the Admiral himself stepped out of the shuttle. I'll tear your guts out. Despite his reputation, the Admiral wasn't especially imposing to look at. Admiral Baradad wasn't especially imposing to look at. <coughs> a man of average height and thin appearance, with dark hair quickly turning gray. The closest thing he had to a distinguishing characteristic was the faded mustache contaminating his upper lip. If it wasn't for the white and gold Admiralty uniform he wore, Ruth probably wouldn't recognize him. The crowd went silent as Barrett had appeared, all the babbling and muttered complaints dying in a moment. They remembered what had happened last year, after all. Barrett had smiled thinly as he addressed the crowd, his soft voice echoing through the square. "'I have arrived,' he said, hands clasped behind his back. "'That is all.' And with that, he turned and began striding away, flanked by two heavily armed bodyguards. Ruth went to move through the crowd to follow Barrett's path, but Oleg stopped by her... By... Uh, by. But Oleg stopped her... Gra by grabbing her arm. What? She snarled up at him, annoyed. Oleg nodded towards the shuttle. The other one, remember? Right, Oleg had mentioned. Apparently this year the Admiral was bringing one of his daughters to join him on his little sojourn. The formerly illegitimate result of an affair between himself and a minister's wife, apparently. From what Oleg had said, the minister had ended up drowning in an, in an unfortunate accident, and the doctor, and the daughter, sorry, had ended up here. Ruth couldn't imagine Barrett had had anything good in store for the girl. This wasn't the kind of place he came to with anything but sadism in mind. This was a planet that wanted to eat people, and it so often succeeded. The girl, she was around Ruth's age, stepped out of the shuttle, hands clutching her arms nervously. She had the Admiral's formerly black hair, but not his face. Ruth supposed that, at least, was a mercy. 
The girl's nervousness was obvious, her hands fidgeting with the hem of her simple white dress. Meredith's daughter looked around the crowd as if she'd fallen into a nest of snakes. That probably wasn't too inaccurate. There weren't many people who'd look favorably upon a relative of their tormentor. Rob Robin Barreted, Oleg muttered from her side. What do you think? Could you kill her if we have to? Ruth imagined the feeling of her metal claws sinking into Robin Barreted's flesh, the satisfying surrender of matter as her blows caved her face into a bloody pit, of the electric heat of blood coating her fingers. It didn't seem difficult. The girl looked weak. In a place like this, she was dead already. Uh, excuse me. Corpses like her should have the good sense to stop pretending they were anything else. Yeah, Ruth smirked. Of course I could. She locked eyes with Robin Barreted, and it felt as if she'd been struck by lightning. The girl looked at her, their eyes meeting across the ocean of the crowd. The girl's bright green gaze looked into Ruth's shadowed gold, concealed beneath her hood. And then, Ruth's enemy smiled sweetly at her. The words caught in Ruth's throat like they'd grabbed onto it with hooks. Oleg looked down at her, slightest concern infiltrating his mountainous features. What's wrong? We made? No. Ruth shook her head slowly. Wait, what's we made? Why have they made us? Oh. The other girl had already looked away, being led to follow her father by the guards. No, I'm fine. She didn't feel so sure anymore. Six years later. As Ruth's consciousness returned, the first thing she became aware of was the headache. To put it simply, her head ached. Ruth supposed... Wow. Ruth supposed that feeling pain was probably better than not feeling anything at all. So long as things could hurt you, that meant you weren't yet dead. Slowly, she opened her eyes, welcoming with a hiss the sunlight on the other side. Whoever she was, it was bright. Not bright enough to be outdoors, but probably near a window or something. It was quickly becoming obvious that what Ruth had assumed was a headache was actually more like an everything ache. It felt like someone had thrown her in a tumble dryer and left her there for a couple, hour, a couple of hours. It, Ruth's eyes, snapped fully open as her last memories finally came back into clear vision. Skipper's heartbeat shotgun, the ship going down, Bruno projecting that giant force field. What had happened? She couldn't just lie here. She didn't have the time. I wouldn't move so quick if I were you, a vo soft voice said, and at the same time a sharp blade came into position to tickle against Ruth's throat. Ruth's eyes adjusted to the light, and her position became obvious. She was on some kind of crude wood cabin, sunlight streaming in through a green glass window. Apart from the bed Ruth was lying on, which seemed to be more part of the floor than anything, the only pieces of furniture were a table and a chair over by the door. She wasn't concerned about the furniture, though. What she was concerned with was the young woman holding the sword to her neck. Ruth did her best to subtly gulp, hoping that wouldn't cause her throat to scrape any further against the blade. "'Good to see you get the gist of things,' the girl said, not moving the sword. She was young, younger than Ruth, in her late teens at the very most. Messy blonde hair covered one of her eyes while the other glared emerald. What really caught Ruth's attention, however, were the bony protrusions extending from each of the girl's temples. Like antlers, they winded, it, they winded in the air for a short distance before suddenly terminating in clean cuts, like the end of them had been chopped off at some point. The girl didn't miss where Ruth was putting her attention. "'You really know what you're do what you're looking at?' Oh, sorry. You really don't know what you're looking at, do you? She murmured. What are you? Carefully, Ruth spoke. Oh, wait, sorry. That was the fucking... Whatever. Carefully, Ruth spoke. I'm nobody. Where am I? The girl raised an eyebrow. Where do you think you are? Ruth glanced around the room, carefully paying attention. Outside, she could hear the tweeting of birds, the clicking of insects. Out in nature somewhere, maybe? Her eyes flicked down to her own body, to the ropes binding her hands and feet. Clearly, she wasn't here on friendly terms. I don't know, Ruth said. You tell me. The girl ignored her response. What's your name? Probably she shouldn't give her real name. That's what Bruno would have advised. <laughs> she took... <laughs> Fuck. She took a few seconds to come up with a convincing alias. Chagana Hadrian. Nailed it. An amused smirk played across the girl's lips. I already know your friend's name, stupid, and you took way too long to come up with that. Are you an idiot or something? Ruth went to sit up, only to fall back down onto her back when her bindings didn't permit it. You have my friends? She demanded, anger finally entering her tone. Where are they? They had to be alive, then. If they told this girl their names, that meant they had to be alive. You'll see them, the girl said carefully, as soon as you answer my questions. One, where the hell did you come from? Ruth considered it. In this kind of situation, should she consider her friends hostages? If so, she couldn't mess around. Mirios, she sighed. The girl furrowed her brow. Mirios? A planet called Mirios, Ruth nodded. If anything, though, that clarification seemed to confuse the girl more. She stood up, taking a few steps back, if nothing else. Ruth appreciated the increased distance between herself and the sword. Planet, the girl mumbled. What do you mean, planet? You're... that's... you're lying! Don't screw with me! It was Ruth's turn to be confused. How am I screwing with you? She asked, sitting up as much as her restraints would allow. Everyone comes from a planet, unless they're born on a starship, I guess. 
A starship? The girl echoed. Her sword fell limp at her side. That's... you mean the thing we found you in? No, no, you're screwing with me. How am I screwing with you? Ruth repeated, growing angry as the girl continued to say things that made no sense. What, you've never seen a starship before? Oh. Oh, now she got it. She'd heard about places like this before. Planets that had become cut off from galactic society, whether by choice or circumstance. From the sounds of it, this place had been cut off for so long they'd forgotten there was even anything beyond their little planet. These places were called Lilith Worlds. What? The girl interrupted Ruth's train of thought, pointing the sword at her threateningly. Why'd you stop? What did you... Now that Ruth looked at her properly, it was easy to see just how young the girl was. From a distance where you could pay attention to how much the blade in her hand was shaking rather than how sharp it was, she looked more frightened than anything. A kid out of her death. What's your name? Ruth asked, doing her best to sound non-threatening. The girl hesitated before answering. Lily, she finally said. Lily Obrisher. Why? Ruth smiled sadly. I'm real sorry, Lily. It happened in an instant. With a flash of red aether, Ruth easily broke free of her restraints, closing the distance between her and Lily in a single step. An aether-infused punch from one hand shattered Lily's sword easily, while the other seized her in a headlock, pulling her close. Ruth had Lily in her grasp before the girl even had time to blink. Still, the girl opened her mouth, presumably to shout for backup. One of, Ru one of Ruth's thin, sharp claws pressed against her throat to put a st pressed against her throat put a stop to that. I don't want to kill you, Ruth said quietly, truthfully, but I can if you make me. You understand? Slowly, carefully, Lily nodded. What do you want? She whispered. It was her turn now to be cautious of the steel pressing against her neck. Ruth narrowed her eyes. I don't want to lose what I have. There was only one answer she was interested in. Where the hell are my friends? Bum, bum, bum. Sorry hey. I stuttered so much during that reading. Wow. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I don't know what's wrong with me. My brain fried. But that was a very nice, short, succinct chapter. Um, and... Poor Lily. What is going on? I'm surprised she didn't react to the usage of God's blood from an alien. Well, she Maybe we'll see some of that to react to that. Yeah, that's true. She was too busy being murdered. Or taken hostage, rather. Uh, so, uh, we got a little bit more build-up of Ruth's backstory. It took up about half of that chapter, and then the other half was sort of like an interaction. It seems Lily managed to tie up the rest, but I'm curious if Ruth could break out so easily... There's no way the others couldn't, unless mm. Skipper was dead. Thinking emoji. Well, he was in no good state last we saw, and he was pretty much, like, comatose. <laughs> I think he might be dead, or at the very least, plot dead, as in comatose, like you said. I'm very curious to see what's going on with him. I hope he... Because I feel like if he's dead dead, then Ruth's gonna lose it, and it's not gonna be a good thing for doing on a backwaters planet. I'm also curious what the deal with this backwater planet is. They mentioned that it's not just worlds that have never been contacted. Sometimes it's worlds that were shunted from contact. And I'm wondering which is the case with this place. Mm. It, the fact that they think they're humans makes me think if, if they had never been contacted, they would have to be the original Earth that was like left behind. The only other way is someone contacted them at some point. They got confused and thought they were humans, and no one's contacted them so long that they th think they're the, like the only life form on the planet, you know? Mm. But very curious what their tech level is if they don't have starships and shit. I wonder if it's more like what we're used to. I wonder if they still have the Wii U on this planet. <laughs> They've not mastered motion controls yet. <laughs> What's this planet called again, or did we not get a name yet? We don't have a name yet. Interesting. Well, I'm excited to see where you take this. Um, and as always, guys, if you're enjoying Aetheral Space... Uh, you should probably just read it on Royal Road instead, because I stutter a lot. And you should leave a review while you're there, on, on accident. Don't while you just so happen to be there. Yeah. If you don't, then the wizard will come for you. So, keep that in mind. <laughs> Pogchamp. That's his name? Pogchamp the wizard? Yeah. yeah. Bye! Bye!